worries of this world, the pleasures of this world, the mundane things of life that charms you, that the Lord will take away from your heart, from your life, that you would live for him and his glory alone. The grace to be consecrated, daily committed, that the Lord will grant unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Precious Father, we are grateful unto you for this day. We pray, Lord, that you speak to our heart right now. And we do pray that anything and everything that is not of you, competing with your glory, competing with your person, competing with your power, competing with your honor, Lord, take away from us in Jesus' name. Help us, Father, that will be a burning and shining light, even in this present evil world in Jesus' name. Speak to our hearts now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I welcome you to the worship service again today in Jesus' name. Uh, we are going to be looking at the message, Godliness in a Worldly Environment. Godliness in a Worldly Environment. We need to understand the times in which we live. We need to understand the situation with our environment. And we need to be wise and be better prepared for eternity. For if there is any time in the history of humanity that the devil is targeting believers, it is now. If there is any time that the devil is at work more than ever before, it is now because he knows that his time is short. And if it is possible, the very elect will be deceived. But I pray we will not be deceived in Jesus' name. I'm looking at First Timothy chapter 6, from verses 6 through to 10. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through to 10. But godliness with contentment is a great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can take, uh, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful laws, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrow. Second John, chapter 2, we we'll look at it from verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passeth away. And the lost thereof, but he that dwell the will of God abideth forever. As we look at the pages of the scripture, we come to understand that the time in which we live, the age in which we live, is an age and time that is completely opposed to God. Opposed to the will of God, opposed to the plan of God, opposed to the purpose of God, opposed to eternity. We know that godliness is the nature of God. And when we talk about godliness, we're talking about something that is divine. We're talking about holiness. We're talking about purity. We're talking about sacredness. We're talking about devotion or devoteness. And we're talking about goodness. Uh, while, on the other hand, um, worldliness is anything and everything that is anti God. Worldliness is a lifestyle of the world, the custom of the world. The practices of the world, the system of the world that is opposed to God, that is opposed to the will of God, that is opposed to the plan and the purpose of God. Somebody put it this way, that worldliness is a lifestyle of sin. And when you look at the word sin, and the person said, S-I-N, sin, is Satan's inspired nature. And so as you come into the fold of Christ, as a believer, 
as you begin to walk in the faith as a child of God, you want to daily ask yourself, what kind of spirit is controlling me? What kind of nature do I have in my life? Is it the nature that is inspired by the spirit of the Lord or the nature that is inspired by Satan? My language, what is inspiring it? My conduct, my character, what is the motivation and the inspiration behind it? Even my dressing, what is behind it? Even, listen to this, the ambitions of my life. The ambitions of your life, what is the spirit behind it? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name so that we will live the life of God in this generation. we we'll look at three points. Number one, the pressure of worldliness. The pressure of worldliness. Because of the environment in which we live, we almost cannot see the real people living the real life of God anymore. And so, everybody is doing things that seems good in their eyes, doing things based on what they see around them. And so, the believer man, the believer woman, the believer Christian lady, and the believer Christian man is under the pressure to do things on the basis of what the eyes could see. But the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, besides the pressure, we want to look at what are the properties of worldliness. Because if you don't understand what worldliness is all about, we just use the word worldliness. It's a vague word. It's a broad word. We need to break it down and then see what are the properties of worldliness so that when you see some of those things in your life, you'll now be able to know that, ah, uh ah, -uh, take it away from my heart, O oh Lord. All the, the, the things of this world, the allurement of this world, the pressures of this world, the excitement of this world, uh, the, 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 the things that charms the people of the world, take away from my heart, O oh Lord, because my goal is heaven. I am a pilgrim. I'm passing through this world. My end journey is heaven, and you will make it there in Jesus' name. We come back to the first point, the pressure of worldliness. Second, uh, second John again, chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lost thereof, but he that dwelt the will of God abides for, abideth forever, forever, and uh, we will abide forever in Jesus' name. I say we will abide forever in Jesus' name. Here in verse 16, the apostle, beloved John, made us to know that we have a threefold description of what uh, word, worldliness is about. It says, the loss of the flesh. The loss of the flesh. The things you put on your body, why are you putting them on? The way you put them on, why are you putting them on? And then the type of what you are putting on, why are you putting them on? What is the motivation? The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes. And then it says, the third one is the pride of life. And then John summed them up by saying that, all these things are not of the Father, but is of this world. Anything and everything of the world, the Lord by his power will take away from our lives in Jesus' name. Whenever you feel prompted to do anything, ask yourself, is it the flesh that is controlling me or the spirit? Because worldliness is a clear indication of the flesh over the spirit. The flesh over the spirit. Uh, and then uh, understand that worldliness elevates uh, the origin of the flesh over the things and the teachings and the instructions and the directions of the spirit. Uh, why worldliness will speak so loud and dominant in wanting to control the spirit of the Lord is meek, is gentle, is lowly. He speaks to you quietly quietly the Lord will help us second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 tells us and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given unto me a turn in the flesh 
the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So here, Paul the Apostle is saying, well, the flesh is there to want to compete with the things of God, but God in his mercy, he gave me a tongue in the flesh. Even when Paul prayed that the tongue should be taken away, God said, Paul, I understand. Leave it there. Leave it there. My grace is sufficient for you, and that grace, no matter what we are going through, will be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. And your tongue in the flesh can be anything, whatsoever it is, God will give you the grace over it in Jesus' name. When we talk about worldliness, worldliness pay attention to time, that is now. What we see now, what we do now, what we feel now, what we hear now, it gives attention more to that than eternity. And yet, the time now is for a short period, while eternity is all forever. When we talk about worldliness, worldliness pays attention to the outward environment. The, the, the dignifying of the outward, the promotion of the outward thing, and then put less emphasis and uh, a lower emphasis on the inward. And so we need to understand that our inward man is what should be renewed on daily basis. Let's take a quick look at the book of uh, Romans chapter 12. And then we look at verses 1 and 2 over there. Why, and uh, this is why Paul, the apostle, was pleading and appealing to the believers that we should uh, do everything we can by the grace of God uh, to make ourselves and life uh, 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 acceptable unto God. When he said, I beseech you, I plead with you. Therefore, brethren, save soul, redeem soul, Transform soul. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. What's the next statement? By the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Pay attention to your spirit. Pay attention to your soul. Pay attention to your heart. But the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Please understand, it is not everything that is good that is acceptable. And it's not everything that is acceptable to man that is the perfect will of God. But as believers, the Lord will grant unto us the grace to be able to do the perfect will of God in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Second Corinthians chapter 4. I look at the 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward, our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Day. The Lord will renew us on a daily basis in Jesus' name. When we talk about worldliness, worldliness is uh, something that promotes self above other people and above God. It is self-promotion over and above God and other people. And the Lord says we must worship the Lord and him alone in all our lives. You'll uh, find that in Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. I go very quickly to the second point, the properties of worldliness. When we talk about worldliness, what is it about? What is it about? What the pressure is coming, dress this way, wear this one, uh, talk this way, do this kind of job and uh, have this kind of friend and the pressure is there. On your job, you have different people that are doing different things and you know as a believer, you cannot be part of it. Come out from among them, says the Lord, and be ye separate, but then the pressure is there. If you don't do it their way, you can get promoted. If you don't do it their way, you can get a raise. If you don't do it their way, you'll be stagnated for so long and so the pressure it's there. If you don't do it their way, you are alienated from other people. You look odd. And uh, it is not always easy to be alone. Loneliness can be challenging many a times. But then you need to understand that one with God is in the majority. 
and the Lord will keep you. The Lord will help you. I mean, you can imagine you're a student in the school, a school of thousands of people, and then you seem different. Uh, you seem unique. Uh, and uh, other people are going this way, and you are at the opposite direction. I can tell you it is not easy. But the grace of God will be sufficient for you in Jesus' name. So let's look at the properties of this thing that is called worldliness. Uh, fleshly desire is worldliness understand fleshly desire in the area of this, uh, uh, in the area of dressing fleshly desire in the area of communication fleshly desire in the area of our relationship with the opposite sex fleshly desire in the area of immorality fleshly desire in the area of drinking fleshly desire to smoke fleshly desire to watch pornography Fleshly desire to mess up your life. Fleshly desire to behave like other students are behaving. Like all the colleagues at work are behaving. Like all the believers out there are behaving. Fleshly, fleshly desire in social life. Your social life. Now you can tell people do all kinds of ceremony today. And I see it again and again. That even in the Christian dome, people celebrate bad day like the people of the world. Uh, they celebrate their name ceremony or they do their name ceremony like the people of the world. Uh, they uh, celebrate their, what do you call it now, their anniversary like the people of the world. Please understand, I'm not saying there is anything wrong in celebrating anything, but how are you doing it and why are you doing it? Is it for God's glory? Now, when people turn 40, they want to celebrate. They turn 50, they want to celebrate. They turn 60, they want to celebrate. Celebration, celebration. Again, there is nothing wrong with us being happy, but what is the reason? What is your motive? When last did you really celebrate your birthday in Christ Jesus? When last did you say, today I clock 20 years old in the faith, and when I look around, there are people we started together that are no more. There are people I met in the faith that are no more. Come and rejoice with me. When last did you do that? But you see, all our attention is on the things physical, the things that are of this world. And when you celebrate in a godly way, the music is not going to be, the, the attention here is not going to be Godly music and worldly dancing. Am I communicating? But in most of the things we do today, we say, well, we are believers, and then so that we can shut people down, shut them out, we put godly music, godly music, and then we come up with worldly dancing, worldly mingling, worldly tingling, and uh, because that is what we see all the religious people doing. You don't know that you are not of the same spirit with them. The Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. And that's why we're saying godliness in a worldly environment. Everything is perverted. Everything is polluted. Nobody is going the way of God anymore. And then in your pursuit in life, your, your, your life pursuit, there also can be worldliness in that area also. How about the way we want people to honor us? The way we want people to respect us? There is nothing wrong. The Bible adjures us, admonishes us to honor them or give honor to whom honor uh, deserves. But at the same time, in the same token, we still don't want to do it the worldly way. How about the way we acquire material things, the earthly things, the things of life? The car you are buying, the house you are buying, the clothes you are wearing, you, you, you are buying, and the things you are doing. Even in the ministry, do you know that there are times that the church gets into competition? The church is doing this, we must do that. The church is over here, we must outrun them. All these things are things of the world. If it is our preaching the gospel, just make the place decent enough for people to come and hear the word of God and let the name of the Lord be glorified and God will help us in Jesus' name. How about flamboyant living? Flamboyant living and uh, uh, the, 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 the manipulation of ignorant people all around us. Uh, and then uh, the way we give gifts to people, 
is there not worldliness in it? And we do that to, to win their heart, to turn their heart, uh, or the way we maybe even appoint people to position and uh, a place of authority. What is the reason? Why all these things are legitimate, legitimate things that are right? Is there worldliness at the on the tone of it, the Lord will help us so that we will not go the way of the world in Jesus' name. The Lord will keep us. I said the Lord will keep us. He will help us. He will preserve us and perfect us in Jesus' name. Worthiness in the way we do our marriage like that of the unbeliever. Do our marriage. And if you were at the singles uh, uh, retreat that we just finished, I told them, uh, the way people of the world, and you, you, you may not understand because uh, uh, we are the leader, we see what goes on. Even in our midst here, you see what you contend with, what you fight with the young people. They want to do wedding and they are not content here with just doing it the simple, godly, Bible way, but uh, because they see uh, the, 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 the um, give me all the, all the bride, the flower girls, amen, give me all what they call it, the bridal trail and all those things. And when I go to some churches, and I'm talking about Deeper Life Church, and I see some of those things happening, I say, well, when I say Deeper Life Church, please understand these are not weddings we conducted. Amen. But deeper life people that will not submit to the authority of God's church and then they went to do it. And then I see some of those uh, things. Or maybe children of leaders in the church that are not within the church understand the appearance in the church but they are not. And then you get there and then you see all this brighter trail, the worldliness in it, some of the dancing that they do, you don't even see some unbelievers do those things. And people want to, and they think that is life. Wedding is just one day, and it, it, is, it is over. But whatever, whatever you do on that one day may affect your true eternity. So you need to understand that you cannot do things like the people of the world. And then some of them, you know, I went for a particular wedding, this is for one of the children of the leader. And um, I got to that place, far away state. And uh, when I got to the place, I said I had to leave. As, because all the bridal, whatever, and the lady that was wedding, you can see everything. You can see, you can tell the, uh, the, the cleavage and everything. I mean, it's like, did these people ever pass through the, the, the wall or the corridor of any church? Forget about deeper life. Did he ever hear the word of God anywhere? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, as believers, we must not fellowship with the works of darkness. No matter what that, what, that work of darkness may be, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I look at it from verses 20 and 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. It says, but I say, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the lost table and of the table of the devil. And so I told our young people that are, that are planning and preparing to get married that all these worldly things, as much as we are praying for you, as much as we want you to get married, we want you to do things in the will of God. But if you choose to do it the worldly way, hear me, we will not bow. I thought the church would say amen. amen. We will not bow. We want all our young people to come to church. And what is the reason and the purpose for us to want them to come to church? To prepare them for heaven. And if they are going to come and say, no, let us come the way we are, which is good. And which is what the Bible says, come the way we are. But then they say, let us remain the way we came. We said, no, you have come to be changed. And if you are ready for that change, God will change you. I said God will change you. But if you want to remain the way you are, and then you want to bring all the things of the world, the properties of the world, the cultures of the world, the behaviors of the world, the attitude of the world, the dressings of the world, into the church, we say, no, 
We cannot do that. We will not do that because we're a church on a mission. The mission of preparing souls for heaven. And by the grace of God, you make it to heaven in Jesus' name. No fellowship with the work of darkness. You can say you're a child of God. And then you have fellowship with us. And then outside of the church, you are in the court. Outside of the church, you are also people that are into drugs. You are outside there with people that are into drinking and uh, pornography. And uh, you, you do all those evil things. No, you have no fellowship with the works of darkness. And there is no conformity with the world in any way or form. We read that from Romans uh, chapter 12 already. When we talk about worldliness, it is unequal yoke with the world. Unequal yoke in marriage, unequal yoke in business, unequal yoke, you know, as a student, again, you need to study, and all you are doing is studying with an unbeliever, not just unbeliever, but even the opposite sex. You need to be careful. Can a man put fire under his bosom and his cloth not be burned? You know, I was in a meeting yesterday, ministers meeting from different churches, and uh, it was a subject on the, the minister and polities. And then the person who ministered is from Deeper Life, and he did a very, very great job. Very, and they all said, this is great and awesome. But the worldliness in some of the people is still there and they want to be into politics and they want to be in the, into preaching and uh, eventually they said pastor what do you say because since the person who ministers is from deeper life i felt he has delivered the word somebody say amen. amen i don't have to say anything again so i sat down there and then they went and went and then eventually the the leader there came and said sir what do you see can you help us with this and so i told them can a man put fire under his bosom and his cloth not be bound. I said, look at it again. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27. I said, pause. I then point to the person and said, you have a position, very good position, and I love your position, and I want to get your position. How do I get it? By promoting you. Is that the way I can get it? By saying you are very good on the job. Is that the way I'm going to get it? By saying that you can do it better than me, is that the way I would do it? How do I get that position? By pulling you down, by destroying you. I said, that is not the call on the ministry of a believer. I said, so, if you are talking about politics, it is a no-go area. And all this will say whether in deeper life or outside of deeper life. And we in the, and I told them I've had people in deeper life that came and said, well, I feel called to be this. And I sat them down and said, this is the word of God. But they don't listen. And then they went into it. And today, by the grace of God, uh, I say by the grace of God, it's unfortunate. But because, but because God will remain God, they are not in the faith anymore. Can a man put fire under his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Be careful of the companion. And then we talk and talk and talk. Why not this? Why not that? If we Christians are not there, how are we going to change things? How many of the Christians that went there have been able to change anything? 50 people are meeting. You are the only one person there. And 49 of them say, this is the way. You alone say, no, that is not the way. Who is going to listen to you? Many of them end up or ended up being converted into that system, that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. But we have been called to pray for them. It doesn't mean we don't relate with them. It doesn't mean we don't fellowship with them. Uh, what I mean, fellowship with them, that is, we don't make them our enemy. That's what I'm talking about. Not that we join them in the things they do. And uh, if for any reason they come to church, we make them to sit down and hear the word of God. Somebody say amen. And not because we now see that uh, uh, this one is a politician, he comes or she comes, and then we're now beginning to frigate and uh, we, 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 we just lose everything. It's not going to happen. If you were here, the day we had a meeting with uh, one uh, of the former uh, head of state of Nigeria, and uh, we had it over here, and then the ambassador of Nigeria was here. How many of you were here that day? Very good. And then he messed up here. Did I, did I stand up? Did I confront him? 
why the general was here and all the people and all the pastors from different places, we will not bow down to Satan in any way or form. No matter whose ox is good, at the end of the day, the general said, maybe we shouldn't have done that way. I said, maybe we shouldn't have done it over here. Amen? Maybe we shouldn't have done it over here. And uh, it was a discussion where he had having a meeting with the general till about 1 a.m. And I will not back down by the grace of God. And when we were to host him the second time, that ambassador cannot come here anymore. If he comes, he sits down at the back. And whether you're ambassador or whoever you are or governor, listen, as a minister, you are their spiritual father. You are their spiritual leader. Their position and their title is termed. Maybe they are here for four years, for two years, for eight years. After that, they are no more there. You are called forever. I say you are called forever. So why should we allow people that are just going to be there today, tomorrow, they are no more, to now destroy the work of God in our, in our, in our hands? Uh, God forbid, and the Lord will hold us and keep us in Jesus' name. Worldliness, worldliness in the things we do, not unequal yoke with the world in any way or form. We, uh, we, we don't serve in the church for self-glory. For self-glory in any way or form. And uh, when you sing in the choir, for God's glory. When you are into praise worship, for God's glory. And there is a way the people of the world, they handle music. And you can tell that all attention is being drawn to themselves uh, for self-glory. No, the purpose of singing in the church is, is for the salvation of soul. Did you hear what I said? If your music is not driving anybody to their kneel, you are filled as a singer. If your music is, I mean, understand that it's time for everything. There are times we clap. But if your music is not making them to think about eternity, that is not the call of God upon your life. If your music is not making them to repent, if your music is not making them to be better prepared for heaven, then your labor on earth is in vain. And so, whether it is praise worship, or it is a regular hymn, or it is a choir rendition, whatever it may be, once you start singing, understand, I told the members of the choir, and I know some preachers may disagree with me, I don't care who disagree and who does not disagree. I told the choir, I said, the singing ministry is more important than the preaching ministry. Because singing is still preaching, but it goes beyond preaching. The reason why I said so is when life is over and the work of the preacher is over here on earth, the work of singing continues in glory. And so if you're a singer, you're not just singing to the flesh, you're not just singing for man, you're not just singing to praise anybody, you're not just singing to draw attention to yourself. As a matter of fact, if the preacher will spend hours preparing, if the preacher will spend hours praying, if the preacher will spend time fasting before he delivers an hour message, you singer, you should do much better. And there are a lot of people that are getting converted through music. And the Lord will use you in Jesus' name. So, whatever we do, and you are an usher, when you serve as an usher, of course you dress well, but not to attract people to yourself in any way or form. And whatever you do in the church, do it to the glory of the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Worthiness is talking down or humiliating the less privileged people. It's worldliness. I can do this. I can do that. Worldliness, self promotion, self elevation. Worldliness is proud look. It is proud talk. I am older than you. Congratulations. You know what I tell people? If you are older than me, then you will die before me. Amen? How about that? And when I say that, it shuts some, some of them down. I say, worldliness. Proud look. Proud talk. There are some people that are incorrigible. There are some people that can reel on others. 
that upon the top that, that they can brag and boast. I am better educated than you. Singles, how many of you are here were there at the meeting? Singles, how many of you were there? You were there. All your education, what did I say it is? Tell us now. What did I say it is? Paper. I got a bachelor's degree. At the end of the day, what did they give you? I got master's degree. What did they give you? I got a doctorate degree. What did they give you? Paper. At the end of the day, when you die, your paper cannot go with you. It is nothing but paper. Look at it as paper. It is nothing. Amen? Of course, we encourage everybody, go to school, be your best, be on top, but at the end of it, let none of those get into your head. Because it is nothing but, it is paper. It doesn't matter what the grit is at the end of the day. What they will give you is something, paper, or not the paper, they will pick it up, they just print something on it, they give it to you, and you are happy. You better get the heavenly degree. I say you better get the heavenly degree. And let heaven rejoice in the fact that on your way to glory in Jesus' name. What is worldliness? Worldliness is lawlessness, rebellion, disobedience. Worldliness is insubordination to higher authority. It is worldliness. If you don't know it, what is worldliness? Worldliness is indecent, promiscuous dressing that at variance with moderation and godliness. That is worldliness. What I'm saying is, there are people that will dress unbelievers. And the cloth they are wearing, and I see that, let's call it spade a spade with some of you. You say you're a deeper life, you say you're in an holiness church, but all you wear, there are holes in it. And everything underneath can be seen. Some of you, they are so lies that it's, it's, it's not healthy for the opposite sex to see. And some of you, the things you wear are so exposing, uh, bad enough. And some of you, they are so short, so short, so short. You know, I'm going to, I'm not going to give you too much detail. I was somewhere, and then this particular lady and a worker in the church, the dressing was, I mean, so short. And sitting down, and eventually I had to call another lady and say, can you please go talk to this lady? Uh, that, and the person said, Pastor, I saw it myself. I spoke to her already. Can you imagine? Even another lady saw it and they felt, uh -uh, this is not good for this kind of environment. And yet, you call yourself a worker in the church. And some of them are mothers. Mothers in the church. Worldliness. Why don't you, as a godly sister, as a godly mother, as a godly lady, go to the market? I know it's tough. It's difficult to get some things that honors and glorify God, but that's part of the price we have to pay for our faith. Do we understand, please? It's part of the price we have to pay for our faith. And as a lady, you wear things that you can't bend anyhow. The whole thing is out there. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And as young men, you know the things you do. You know the way. Do you know in the days gone by, we think it's the ladies that mingle and tingle. I see that even boys are doing that now. I see they are doing that now. When you are really genuinely converted, you'll be able to say, things are different now. Something happened to me. When I gave my life to Jesus. When I gave my life to Jesus. And it doesn't matter at what age you give your life to Jesus. The spirit of God will be the one controlling and directing you in everything that you do in Jesus name. <clears throat> Worldliness is carefree behavior to God's work and glory. Carefree behavior. You know, the brother moderating earlier today talks about lateness to the church. You know, some of you, you just come anytime. Is the way they do it in the world, who will arrest me? Is the way they do it in the religious environment, who will stop me? 
and uh, we think we're incorrigible, but the Lord will turn us around. I said the Lord will turn us around. And anything we do, we do to the glory of the name of the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 tells us that whether we eat or drink or, or whatever we do, we should do all to the glory of God. Of God. And I have a word to encourage you from uh, Titus chapter 2 verses 11 and 12. It says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching us that deny, deny, what's the next word? Ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Not in another, but this present world. And the Lord will hold us in Jesus' name. I get to the top point, the plea for godliness. The plea for godliness. Now that we have seen the pressure of worldliness, we have seen the properties of worldliness. What is the word of God telling us? Son of God, separate yourself from this world. Child of God, flee from every worldly loss. A believer man, a believer woman, let no man despise thy youth. Brother, sister, let your moderation be known unto all men, no matter where you go, whether you are at work, you are in the church, whether you are in your community, you are in your village, you are in your country, let your moderation be known unto all men. Let heaven be able to testify to the fact that you are a true child of God. That you have nothing. Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh, but hath nothing in me. Let heaven be able to testify. Not your pastor, not your wife, not your husband, not your father, not your mother. But let heaven be able to testify that the devil has nothing in you. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. The plea for godliness, and I want to tell you that the highest calling of a man, uh, of God to a man, is a call unto godliness, is a call unto holiness, is a call unto purity, is a call unto righteousness. No matter who you are, a man may be great, may be a great preacher, or a great teacher. You may be a diligent worker in the church. You may even be gifted more than anybody. Or you may even be a reliable parent uh, that your children are saying, Thank God for daddy, thank God for mommy. Or maybe you're a zealous church worker or a church goer. Maybe you're a good father, a good mother, generous, or a philanthropist. You are always a helping people. Understand, without holiness, no man shall see God. All of those things are good, but without godliness, all those things will be in vain. Look at that passage again, where we just read Titus chapter 2. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to who? All to all men. To all men. Teaching us that deny, you have to deny it. It's something you have to do. I can't do it for you, you can't do it for me. Deny ungodliness and uh, worldly laws. We should live how? And I give you an assignment when you leave church today, go back home, pick up your dictionary and look for the meaning of sober. How to be sober? Soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Titus chapter 1, verse 1. This is Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. Acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Come back to that lovely passage, 2 John chapter 2, verse 15 again. He says, love not the world. This is the plea. This is the admonition. This is the request of the aged, beloved apostle. Love not the world. Love not the world. And please pay attention. Maybe you look up a little bit. In the Christian down, we say that John the Beloved is the apostle of love. Very gentle, very meek, very humble, 
But pay attention. Look at it from chapter 1 to chapter 5. And then look at 2 John. You see, everywhere John was very, very forceful and very direct when it comes to holiness. When it comes to godliness and righteousness. And it is this same John that is saying, if you look at chapter 3, verses 8, uh, 9, and 10, it says, uh, he that committed sin is of the devil. He that committed sin is of the devil. And then he went further to say, whosoever that is born of God does not commit sin. That is John. Does not commit sin. And then it is John that says, in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil also. He said, if you don't do righteousness, he was very direct, you are a child of the devil. You cannot be walking in darkness and claiming to be a child of the light. You cannot claim to belong to God and then there is nothing of God in you. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the language of the world, the fashions of the world, the dressing of the world, the behavior of the world, the conduct of the world, the way the worldly people do their businesses. And you know, uh, you know, in Africa they say kick back. Here they, they have a better language. Amen? I think, is that not the one they call human relation or something like that? Whatever they call it. And then over there they say you give bribe. Here they say it is lobbying. They have their way. They have their language. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. When a man surrender his life unto God, he will discover that the world is not at friendship with God. The world is nothing. There is nothing of the world that has to do with the, anything of the Lord. And uh, the ways of the Father, the ways of the cross, is a way that leads home. The Lord will take us home. First Timothy chapter 2. I look at it from verse 1. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Verse 1. It says, I exhort you, therefore, that first of all, first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority. Supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks. Prayers. A lot of people need prayer. Supplication. A lot of people need seats. Many you think are standing and not standing. They may have been long in the church but they are far from the faith. Maybe they knew the truth before, but they lost it. Prayer, supplication. You know, it's not every time somebody offends you, you want to take it back. Actually, at no time should you, should you want to retaliate or take it back. Because you don't know what the enemy is planning or doing in their life. So, pray for them. Supplication. Prayer. Intercession. Now, you will understand, you say, but supplication is prayer. Prayer is prayer. Intercession is prayer. Paul, why are you saying uh, supplication, prayer, intercession? When you get into the ministry of praying, you will see and understand the difference between these things. And then he said, giving of thanks. Lord, thank you that they are still alive. They are not dead yet. Thank God that there is still hope for them to make a change. It then went further to say, for kings and for all that are in authority. So, you pray for all men, you pray for leaders as well, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Why all those prayers? Why three, three different types of prayer? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all what was the next word? Godliness, that is it, and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. The Lord will help us. The Lord will keep us. The Lord will preserve us. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. As I try to wrap up, understand that the day of the Lord is coming very, very soon. 
And, we need, and uh, again, it doesn't matter whether you are 80 years old or you are 8 years old or even 18 years old. Anybody can die at any time. If you die, where will you spend eternity? Understand, there is no worldly person that will make it to heaven. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 12. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great, great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Sin then, sin then, that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation? And what's the next word? Godliness. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. We are, to we are to place the most priority on what has the most value. And that thing is godliness. 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 Not on popularity, not on possession, not on pleasure, not on power, but our priority should be on godliness. Anywhere you go, everywhere you go, let Christ be seen in you. And let your moderation be known unto all men. Shall we rest upon our feet as we go to God in prayer? The Lord is calling you to this life of God. Understand that godliness promotes a peaceful life. Godliness is a life that honors the Lord. Godliness is seen in humility. It is seen in meekness. It is seen in being correctable, corrigibility. Proverbs chapter 29 says, He that being often reproved, but had not his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed. And that without remedy. Godliness is not dishonoring authority. Godliness is not disrespecting authority. Godliness is not behaving unseemly. Godliness is not being rude. Godliness is not being proud. Godliness is not being a talkative. You talk too much, you talk yourself into trouble. Godliness is not in line. Godliness is not in bribing and in corruption. You need to gain an entrance into school. You do it in a smart way. But you know it is bribery. You know it is corruption. Because you want something, you pour water on the ground so you can go on a wet ground. You know it's not the will and the plan and the purpose of God. Godliness promotes true value. True value. Godliness is not exposing your body. Godliness is not, the fa is, is not pursuing the fashions of the world. Godliness is not going after the methods of the world. Godliness is not holding our homes and family like the people of the world. Raising our children like the people of the world. That a lot to help you. Over here, we are preparing you for heaven. 
And by the grace of God, you will make it to heaven. But then you have to make your choice. You have to tell the Lord to take it away from your heart. And some of you, you are struggling, you are fighting. And something is telling you, it's only deeper lie. That is a lie of the devil. That is a lie of the devil. All these things we are telling you and teaching you. We can point you to other churches that are not even African churches in this land that believes in this same word of God, the Bible, that believes in holiness and righteousness, in purity and uprightness. You can say you are a child of God and then you go to the pool exposing yourself, dressing naked, you're making yourself a stumbling block. You can say you're a Christian and you're fighting. Just talk to God. Just talk to God. Just talk to God. You know, today, I want to just allow you to talk to God on your own. Whenever you feel you are done praying, you are free to go. We're not going to close the meeting. You need to be on your knee to pray until you settle it with God. Until God take that thing away from your heart. That ego. That pride. That fashion. That loss of the flesh. That desire to marry an unbeliever. That pressure to run to another church where they accommodate and tolerate anything and everything. That life of promiscuity. Until God take away from you. That pornography. Pornography. On the television, pornography. On the internet, pornography. Until God take away that masturbation. Until God take away that un ungodly, unholy relationship with the opposite sex. Until God take you back to Calvary. Until God restore back to you the joy of your salvation. Until you genuinely, sincerely repent of that sin you committed secretly. And you pray just uh, a shallow prayer and you think it's all over. It's not over. You deal with it seriously and severely. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. You humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Godliness in a worldly environment. You can make a difference. You can make a difference. Don't allow anybody to pressure you to hell. To pressure you. Don't allow any situation. To pressure you. 
into eternal damnation. Heaven and earth will pass away. Not a jot or tittle of God's word will pass unfulfilled. Let us live the life of God. The life of holiness and righteousness. Yes, we are in this nation America. But America is not heaven. When judgment will come, the nation of America will be born with fervent heat. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. This is not a deeper life preaching. This is the Bible. This is the word of God. This is not the word of any denomination. Without holiness, no man shall see God. He says, I am the Lord, I change it not. And my glory I will share with nobody. Worldliness in this life pitches us against the will, the plan, and the purpose of God. Teenagers, you can pray. Ladies, you can pray. Young men, you can pray. Someone knew the Lord at a tender age. Then a pastor's son or daughter will not get you to heaven. 